All right then, gang. So now we have a WebSocket connection set up. We need to be able to send data from the browser to the server. Now this needs to happen when we enter text into the chat form. So not this form, this is the name form, but the chat form itself, and then hit enter. We want to accept that on the server. So we need to send it from the browser. First though, we need to hook up this functionality where we choose a name, enter chat, then it hides this form and shows the other form instead. So let's quickly do that first of all. So inside the index file, let's go to the script. And down here, we just need a few references to the DOM first of all. So let me just paste those in and you can see right here, we're getting the name form, which is this thing over here, this form. And we can see that up here, name form. We're also getting the chat room itself. So that's all of this thing that's currently hidden because we want to unhide that when we submit this form. We're also getting the chat list and that's this thing right here because ultimately we need that to add li tags to it later when we receive messages. And then finally we have the chat form which is this form right here and that's the input to add a new message and this button right here. So we have all of those references. Now we want to hook up the functionality of this name field right here. So first of all, let's create a variable for the name. So I'm going to say let's name and to begin with, I'm going to set it equal to a non. So before they even type anything in and hit enter, it's anonymous. Okay, so now we need to enter the chat room when we click on this. So we need to add an event listener to this form, a submit event listener. And we can do that down here. So let me say, first of all, enter chat with name. And then I need the name form, which we have right here. Then I need to add an event listener. And that event listener is going to be a submit event. And that occurs when we click on this button. It fires a submit event on the form. So then we want to fire a callback function where we take the event object automatically. And inside, we want to, first of all, prevent the default action of the form, which is to refresh the page. We don't want that to happen, so we use prevent default to stop that. Then I want to get the name, whatever user types in here, from the input. So I'm going to say name is equal to, and by the way, I'm just updating this variable we already declared. So name is equal to the name form dot nickname. And I can say dot nickname because we named this nickname. So when we have an input inside a form, I can use dot notation and then the name of that input to grab that field. But then we want the value of that field. So I say dot value. And that gets us whatever value is currently inside this form field. So I'm grabbing that now and I'm updating this name variable with that. The next thing I want to do is add a class of hidden to this form because remember when we have that, it hides it. So once a user has submitted this form, we take the name, we update that, and we want to hide this form. So let's say down here that we want to take the name form, oops, name form, and we want to access the class list of that, and we want to add a class, and that class that we want to add is hidden. Now we also want to remove the hidden class from this chat room because once we enter a name, we want to show the chat room. So let's now get the chat room which again, we have a reference to right here. So chat room, and we want to access the class list again. This time, remove a class, and that class is going to be hidden because by default, it has that class. We hard coded it right here. So let's see if this works. First of all, I'm going to save that and refresh over here and choose a nickname, Yoshi, enter chat. And we can see, we now see the chat room. Now this here, this is not a message I've sent. This is the one we hard coded earlier on right here, okay? So then, we've set up that functionality. Now we need to be able to send a new chat message to the server through the WebSocket when we type a message here and then press send. So let's do that now. So like this, I need to attach an event listener, but not to the name form this time, to the chat form. So let me come down here and first of all, do a new comment to say, send a new chat message. And um, we'll take the chat form and then we add an event listener to that. And the event is gonna be again, a submit event. And we wanna fire a callback function, take the event object as an argument. And again, we say e.prevent default to prevent the form from trying to refresh the page. And then down here, we're going to say let's message equal to the chat form dot 
message and that's because we named this message right here so again we're using dot notation to grab that field then we want the value from that so now we're storing that in this thing right here so whenever a user types something in here and hit send to submit it we're now grabbing that value and storing it inside this variable now this is where we want to send that message to the server and the way we do that is by taking our websocket instance which we have here so we say ws and then use a method on this called send now we want to send a json string because there's going to be two properties on this there's going to be the name that we grab right here so who sent the message and also the message itself so we want to send a json object now the object is going to look something like this it's going to be a name property and also the message property now when we have a property and a value the same so for example it would normally be this name is name and message is message right so we're saying the name property is the name we have right here and the message property is the message variable we have right here because these are named the same things we can shorten this to this and then automatically it applies the value of this variable to this property and this variable to this property okay so we're sending along those two properties inside this object but this needs to be a json string so we need to say json dot stringify to turn this into a json string and surround the object with parentheses so now this object is being turned into a json string and then we're sending that json string to the server so now we're sending data from the browser the client we need to then accept it on the server so then now we're sending a websocket event to the server and we need to listen for these events on the server right here inside this chat connection function and then we need to react to them remember at this point we already have the websocket connection set up and then we're just listening for events in this websocket connection so when we send this message right here it will register as a websocket event and we can listen for that now the way we do this is by using an asynchronous for loop and this is similar to how we listen for requests over here only this time we're listening for websocket events on the websocket right here so let's set that up first of all and to be honest let me get rid of these console logs because we don't need those anymore either and down here i'm going to say for await because again it's an asynchronous for loop const ev which stands for events of websocket which is the thing we grab right here so every time there's a websocket event so every time data is sent from the front end this is a websocket event but also there are other types of events as well like a close event when someone closes their browser that connection ends and we get a close event on the websocket so let me just log the event to the console first of all i'm going to say console.log and then ev so if i save this now i'm going to come over here in fact let's open our terminal and let me just first of all refresh over here enter the chat doesn't really matter our nickname and enter a message send that we should be sending a websocket event then to the server and over here we can see this logged to the console so the event is a json string so the type of the event is a string now if the type of event is a string it basically means we're getting some data right so let's do a little check to see is the type of the event string and if it is let us do something with that so what i'm going to do is create a little comment here to say create event object if event is string so i'm going to do an if check and inside the if i'll say type of ev is triple equal to string so if this is the case then we want to take that json string and pass it into an object which we can use in this code so i'm going to say let ev object be equal to json dot pass and then ev right here that's all we need to do okay so it passes this json string right here into an event object let's also just log that to the console so console.log ev object so now we're working with an object instead of a json string so let me save that and come back over here i'm going to send this again and notice over here oops let me just refresh this to re-establish the connection 
and enter in a name, then type any old message, send it, and we see now this is an object, not a string. So this first line is because we log out the event itself, which is a JSON string. Down here, we log out the object and we can see it's an object because of the different coloring. And this time we can work with it. So we could say like EV object and then dot whatever property we want to access on it, like the name or the message. All right. Now, like I said before, there are other types of events and one of those is a close event. So let me just show you this. I'm going to come over to the browser and I'm actually just going to cross off this thing right here. So I'm going to close the WebSocket connection. Now, if I do that and come over here, then we're going to notice this logged to the console now right here. So this event and this event has a code of 1001 and that is basically a close event. So now we're not getting this kind of string as an event, but this thing instead. So it's closed on the front end, but at that point, what we want to do is actually delete that socket from our map because we no longer want to track that socket and send data to it or through it later on. So we can use a method provided to us from this module right here, the WebSockets module called is WebSocket close event. So I'm going to import that first of all is WebSocket close events. So we can use this to check is the type of event down here a close event. So I'm going to say if and then in parentheses, paste this in and pass in the events. And if this is true, it means it's a close event. And at that point, we want to take our sockets map and delete something from that. So delete and we pass in the ID right here that we have for this particular web socket. So that is going to look through the map of sockets and it's going to delete the one with that ID. So the one that was just closed. So let me also place a comment above this to say delete socket if connection closed. OK, so that's pretty much done for now. So now we're sending messages from the browser to the server and we're accepting those and we're turning those into an event object. Now, next up, we need to broadcast those messages back to all clients. So say, for example, I'm in one browser and I send a message. Maybe there's about five other browsers connected to that chat room with their own WebSocket connection. We need to take that message that we get right here that is sent from that one person and we need to broadcast that message down every WebSocket that we have in this map right here to each browser so that they can take that message and display it in the chat room for each user. So we'll tackle that in the next video.